guys, 24-7 tech here, <clears throat> and the Galaxy S9 was released a while ago, um, but the main feature that even Samsung says is the reason you have to buy it is the camera. The camera is apparently reimagined, and I certainly think so, because I really wouldn't be doing a whole review on that if I didn't really like it enough. Yeah, this is your um, one-stop shop for the review of the Samsung Galaxy S9's camera. Now, most YouTubers not, will not do this, but I really think this is a strong point for Samsung's Galaxy S9 and really deserves a dedicated review. So, yeah, let's just dive into this. Okay, so first of all, let's just get the differences out of the way. You want to go for the Galaxy S9 Plus if you want the best camera. That's, that's it. That's plainly it. Now, by no means will you get a worse camera on the Galaxy S9, but the S9 Plus is the way to go for the camera. So, I'm just going to be talking about the S9 Plus this whole way. Um, but do notice that only the bokeh, feature, bokeh features, dual OIS, um, and, well, yeah, basically that. I'll tell you the... I'm just going to talk about the S9 Plus in general, okay? Now, first, let's kick it off with the dual aperture. This is um, one of the best features. It can switch aperture that when dedicated, when you have, let's say, a better lighting situation, like this lighting, it will switch to a f2.4, but let's say you had a low lighting situation, like maybe, um, I don't know, um, a sidewalk or something like that in the night, um, it can switch to f1.5 mode. So there's two modes, f2.4 and f1.5. f1.5 is for the low light shots and everything. f2.4 is for the brightly lit shots. And that's really nice because low light photography improves by a lot. A lot, I tell you. And dual aperture is installed on the rear camera, the only one for the S9, and the rear wide camera for the S9 Plus. The first one you see. There's two lenses on it, and the first thing you see on the top, that's the one with the dual aperture. Um, let's just say these pictures look absolutely phenomenal. Okay, low light photos with noise reduction. That's one of my biggest complaints on the Galaxy Note 8. Of course, if I use the flash, the noise reduction stops a little, but it's still there, that's the point. Um, it's because of the dual, because uh, of the um, aperture, it comes out clear and it's awesome. That that might be a really good thing, but uh, I sort of take pictures a lot. I usually take pictures of scenery and all that type of stuff, but still, it would still help me definitely. Cause f one point seven is a good fixed aperture, I could say for low light and stuff. But when you get a really brightly lit shot. I think an f2.4 lens would definitely improve it. Um, <clears throat> so it can get out. And this is a feature which really boggles my mind. Super slow-mo. Tackling Apple's, what, 1080p video in 240 frames per second? <sniffs> nah. <clears throat> HD resolution. 960 boggling frames per second. They're going all out. They they beat the Pixel 2 with the low light shots and everything. I'll come to why they uh, beat the iPhone 10 later. And they also beat the iPhone in general with the super slow mo. So Samsung this year, I think they got the camera segment down. Like right now, comment down below what you think this will get in a DxOMark rating. I will comment down below what I think they'll get, so you might want to scroll down in the comment section to see that. Um, it can only do a 0 0.2 seconds of recording approximately, but it um, it's not like a full thing because that would just take too much memory. Um, so if you did it for like a long time, but that 0 0.2 seconds extends to 6 seconds of playback. That's what, 30 times the amount? God, that's that's so good. Oh my god, that's awesome. And plus, I thought it would be in like, what, 360p, 480? No, it's at HD resolution, so I'm guessing 720, maybe 1080, don't know. 
But they also did improve the other one, so th I think there's 1080p, 240 frames per second slow-mo video, so... God, this camera is awesome! The only other thing which I would say they really improved is probably the AR, the argument, um... AR emoji, augmented reality, all that stuff. And the performance, but that's sort of a normal thing. Oh my god. Okay, so, yeah, the new one. Easy sharing. Instant edits, effortless lights. Um, so, you can create awesome super slow-mo videos to share with your friends. And you can um, also put it to background music. And you can put it to three different modes. You can set it. Um, watch it over and over. You can put reverse loop. So it goes in reverse. Um, and then you can put a forward loop. And you can also do a swing. So cool. Awesome. This is something a lot of people would like. I'm telling you this new feature. The lock screen. You can put a super slow-mo masterpiece in your lock screen. And it would just go... It would just do whatever it did. And it would show you. that. That's awesome. That's that's completely awesome. Um, you can turn on motion detection and record at the right moment. Because, you know, those shots just don't come when you want them to. Just like when you're watching football and you don't know when the big play will come, but you don't want to use up your 64 gigabytes of memory for the three-hour-long game. Just put your phone up there, motion detection, when it comes, you can get that shot. That will be awesome. That's just awesome. And live focus, which I use on my note series phone. That's my profile picture. I use that for my profile picture. It looks, uh, for YouTube, it looks awesome if you didn't know. Um, but live focus has now bokeh filters. It's not exactly like Apple's, it's not, no, it's not Apple's portrait lighting system at all. But, <clears throat> It, it's so pretty good, um, not that great, I don't see myself using it a lot, but you can, like, if there's a light in the background, or it just pops, like, you can put, like, if there's a, if it's a party and you have, like, a bunch of lights behind you, with none, they just appear like normal circle lights, but you can set it to different, um, different types of things, so rabbits, aeroplanes, don't ask me why you would do that, twinkles, hearts, Butterflies, I don't know, anything that you want. A note? Like a music note? So, I don't know, if you use that, go okay, good for you. But, eh, I don't see myself using that. Um, wow, this review has gotten a lot. That's how good this camera is. There's so much to talk about it. Um, dual OIS on the S9 Plus, which is pretty, uh, which is really good. I've tested it on my Note 8. And normal OIS on the Galaxy S9. Um, and finally, finally, um, a Pixel owner kept talking to me about this. They're like, oh, I, can't, I don't need a bunch of storage because I can store all my pictures on Google Photos. I'm like, I have 50 gigs. I think that's enough. But my 4K content uh, sort of um, takes up a lot of memory. I've seen that around 6 gigabytes for some of them. Like, I think my Huawei Make 10 Pro video was like 6 to 7 gigabytes. Because it was a 16 and a half minute long video with just a lot. Now, Google Photos. Unlimited storage. Awesome. It's really good. Free storage at high quality. So, 4K. If you put it in at 4K, you get it in at 4K. And even super slow-mo in the same quality, the HD resolution. So, there you go. That's your little uh, review in a nutshell of the Galaxy S9 camera. It's awesome, I'm telling you that. I can't wait to get my hands on it. That would be epic. Thanks for watching, guys. Drop a like down below. Subscribe right up there. One click does it all. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.